and then you said this is about EBITDA for talking good, strategic discussions good. So, so his question was very good. His was for calculating terminal value. Should you use a multiple? You should not. Even the EV. Huh. Today, when you are talking about okay, and the primary company valuation, the secondary valuation, you value your company okay if it's a times of its own multiple. That's that's what is being called absolute value. Absolute. That's then you have to go back and check your assumptions. So you, again, very good observations. So please note, if you start combining both the methods, it will collapse. So what you should do is you calculate using DCF. Then, as you very correctly said, use the current EBITDA, see the multiple, see if it is undervalued, overvalued. Then go back and within the group talk about your assumptions. Have you assumed the working capital correctly? Have you, I'll put it up, sorry, I had, but I'm sure sir knows it, right? Have you assumed the capex requirements currently? All that four, as, all the four aspects of the formula you still keep questioning. But sir, what many people do, right? What many people do is very wrongly, they take into account for calculating terminal value, they take a multiple. It's DCF, I'm open to any questions on DCF. I have introduced what is known as free cash flow to firm. I have again stressed the point with folded hands. I am again saying this because today I am a teacher and I need to do my job. As a consultant, I may not say this. As a teacher, I want to tell you focus on terminal value in any valuation. See how that calculation is done. Focus on the assumptions there. Terminal value is what gives what is known as majority of the valuation of the company. 65 to 70 is an understatement. It can go even above that. Having said this, <coughs> before we break for lunch. I think now the time has come for me to define one term and leave it at that, VAC. That R was nothing but VAC, cost of funds. So let me just put that up and we'll discuss this in detail post the lunch. I'll not rub any of this. R stands for weighted average cost of capital. And one of the key things in weighted average cost of capital is what is your debt equity ratio? What is your debt equity ratio? And here I want to say something. This debt equity ratio is also known as leverage ratio. And I want to end this session by saying that you should not focus on the current debt equity ratio. This is where I want sir to speak, sir to speak, not the finance guys, the strategists, sir, possibly you. What you should bring into account is targeted debt equity ratio. Thank you. So, aapka current debt equity ratio, sir, is important. What is more important is targeted. What are you targeting in the next three years, five years? How are you forming your, this is what we call in strategy, known as capital structuring decision. You have to focus on what is your capital structuring decision. I like to get into VAC in greater detail, right, and show you a different methodology. Anything that we have covered till now, you would like to ask, please, before we break for lunch. So when you come back, I'll start off with, I'll possibly set this right, and then I'll start off with VAC, right. But anything that you would like to ask before we take a lunch break, anything on what we have covered. Sorry if the anywhere I've gone fast. I have deliberately not covered something known as net present value and IRR, right, in valuation of projects because today I wanted to talk about valuation of companies, but I am open for queries on that end also because today I want to focus on valuation of companies, right. I share with you the practicalities of that. Anything across EBITDA, EBIT, break even, free cash flow to firm, a DCF. The, the smaller the capital R. Yes, sir. You're going to use the R that is used here to get the terminal value. Is, is nothing, though here, sir, one is this R, though in the formula I put it as capital R, it doesn't matter small or big, senior. That is what we are going to talk post lunch, which is nothing but VAC, sir, weighted average cost of capital, which is where you will bring it, we'll talk about it in detail, which is where you will bring into account what is your debt equity ratio. And so the challenge there, which Mr. Sanjay would tell you is, how do you calculate cost of equity? And especially so if the company happens to be unlisted. You have to get some practical insights. Listed company is still easier. Unlisted, there are two additional things that you have to remember. 
Beta is very easy, but it's a listed company. And there are challenges. Unlisted is then you have to tell. It's very simple, but two additional steps. I'll talk about that in greater detail, definitely, Prasanna sir, on back. Anything on what we have covered, please. So, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Intangible assets, sir, just before you came, Sarab sir was saying that, right, is licenses, patents, right. Vishnu sir had a good query on that, goodwill, right. These are all the intangibles and typically we amortize that over a period of time. So, and again, please understand, sir, if you have got a license to sell something for, and you have purchased that license for 700 crores and you have the right, because of that license, you can sell something for 7 years. That means value per year is 100 crores. So after first year, your patent, your license is not worth 700 crores. It's worth only 600 crores. So minus 100, you can do it here. So it's again, please note, sir, it is a, it's, it's a non-cash item. Because anyway, when I purchased it itself, I did the capex of 700 crores. Ye kali book entry, I am doing minus 100. Kar Anything that we'll break for lunch, right? With your permission, okay, my only request is, right? If we can, if we can take ten minutes off from the lunch, such it's a smaller group, so we can we come back in fifty five zero minutes, if possible, please. Right? Five zero fifty minutes, whenever fifty. So a colleague was asking me about uh, project finance, right? I'll just tell you, I'll. Do I not be talking much about it? You can, uh, if you wished, that you could please visit the website. There's a small website initiative I've started, <laughs> reducing my uh, training commitments a bit. The last two and a half, three years. Uh, small website I've promoted. Small website I've promoted, right? www.simplifiedfinance.net. In fact, uh, I'll be uploading this session also on that, the valuation session. Idea is very simple, sir. If anybody wants to learn, they should learn. <coughs> Sanjay, sir, there are, you can please visit this. You will see, right, <coughs> there'll be a video series on project finance. If you <coughs> wish to take it up, in fact, I would request, sir, to just have a look. You know, I've covered everything from costing of a project across down to how do you fund it. <coughs> Sanjay, sir, you should also go through it. I've talked about ECBs there. Okay. I've talked about ECBs, <coughs> right? This valuation lecture, I'll upload it. I'll be uploading it, right? Obviously, with some editing, I'll upload it. Whoever wants to see, whoever wants to learn, the idea is, I wish that people will have more and more idea. I want this entire group to do something for me. Humble request, because I'll not be discussing it. There is a lot of uh, misinformation about subprime crisis in US. And I, I suspect many of us have not understood what is a crisis. Prasanna sir, if you get time, and I would request you all on a personal basis, please watch that video on subprime crisis. It's a 45-minute lecture that I have delivered, and I have explained how from entire, mo it's got nothing to do with valuation, from monetary policy to what is the U.S. crisis. A small short session that I did in Dubai, and SPJN was kind enough to permit me to upload it on the website. You should note it, because there I have covered what some of my dear colleagues were asking, you know, what's a crisis? My present thing for those of you who are wondering, I think rupee dollar will still remain at this levels. Okay, thank you for the question. Before I start the valuation exercise, I don't think rupee dollar will really come to 45 levels now because Europe, there is still going to be trouble. And that trouble is still not over. So please get used to it. And my, I could be wrong and I hope I'm wrong. But my mind tells me that you have to get used to 48, 49, 40, 50 levels you should get used to. So if you're costing something and some of you are into imports and exports. Keep that in your mind. 49.50 levels, you will see the dollar rupee rate now. It's a big crisis, and I personally believe euro cannot stand the way it is standing now. In the next three, four months, Pillai sir, you will see this coming out. Right? Absolutely. I personally feel, sir, that um, Greece is going to be expelled. Right? I, I personally believe, or a 17 nation theory will fall. Right? And that will lead to a lot of dollar buying, which is good for somebody like these friends of mine. But otherwise, the importers would better be warned. 49.50 level. I tell you why. Very of us think 
फोर्टी नाइन फिफ्टी अभी हुआ है वापस फोर्टी सेवन जाएगा फोर्टी सिक्स जाएगा आई थिंक नहीं होगा अभी फॉर द नेक्स्ट थ्री एटलीस्ट थ्री फोर मंथ्स इफ नॉट सिक्स मंथ्स रुपी विल बी अंडर प्रेशर क्लियरली अंडर प्रेशर प्लीज यूज इट इफ इट बेनिफिट्स यू इफ नॉट टॉक टू कलीग्स स्पेशली आई थॉट आई शुड टेल दिस बिकॉज सर ऑफ सर डे विल लुक अप टू सर फॉर एडवाइस राइट हैविंग सर दिस लेट्स डू ए टू स्टेज ग्रोथ मॉडल टूगेदर दिस इज दिस पार्टन सर इट इज it is good in one sense sir but uh, personally sir it's uh, it's also bad because the demand from europe and uh, right us is falling yeah so in that sense it is bad but otherwise currency wise it is good can i also say something sir since we had a personal chat May, much of this exports is not real exports you can, you please re, you understand that it is money laundering yeah right yeah. money yeah. right right cover yeah. own money coming back right so we have uh, india claims to have ex exported 2.2 billion to bahamas alone <laughs> it's, it's all over the place now i have been saying this for some it's all over the place so uh, is it good for exports currency wise good but uh, demand wise i think we have a serious problem sir what about imports no imports the export that will affect the cost of import this is the profitability is it a good time for uh, acquisition in you know india they like what affect they are out sir uh, they are out to sell and i think the best time you can get distress sales is something like this this also include germany also forget greece udar belgium they are to portugal spain definitely even italy even uh, stronger countries like germany you can this is the time where you can just move in for the kid prices we can leverage our profits by reducing the valuation absolutely ki distress sale ho raha na they are not able to stand so they in fact i'll tell you something a com company which has never done acquisitions in a big way will do it now take it from me in writing and you remember me for this infosys in the next uh, next quarter you will see infosys will do some acquisitions so just one thing to which may be out of uh, please sir topic. Uh, lately huh. it's been all over the uh, media <coughs> that it companies are going in for a huge recruitment drive what's the reason for this when the economy is slowing down many of the, many of them sir have uh, now turned the focus to domestic yeah but in the domestic economy is is, is still right uh, the, the slow down, there is a do slow down yes. but sir whenever we say cost cutting we need to go to these guys for cost cutting because the first thing that we look at is outsourcing so whenever you say slow down or recession you will see that these guys they will get a lot of deals because a lot of outsourcing things no, coming no, up it comes going to a lot of recruitment drive what reason is sir you will see a lot of companies in india going for cost cutting one way to cost cut prasanna sir is outsource outsourcing. you guys will get it service outsource simple yeah, right and i'll tell you here the one we have not realized is do we keep saying i'm sure we should we speak about it service definitely speak about it. it's no longer tcs infosys wipro there's a new kid on the block cognizant yeah and cognizant is like recruiting oh, like going for a low margin high volume business no project to be left untapped tap as far as possible is the strategy sir uh, for the point two is uh, it's not just recruitment local every company is adding recruitment local in the sense where they are yeah, operating yeah that, that's true but even in india they are adding a large number there's no concept of bench strength sir it's just that get what you want and pitch coming back sir best time to move yeah. best time to move okay. and Any only only my more. only request sir pillar uh, sir is currency is against you currency. so if you are looking at domestic funding right then i i i personally believe that october now last week again rbi is going to increase interest rates yeah. so in, right, hoga hoga ho jayega next week you will see the announcements coming in interest rates in they india are in so they have to they have to. Yeah, yeah. they have to and this will definitely happen there you should consider i'm sure you are aware i'm taking this topic it will benefit some of us also is and if, if you get anything about 20 crores you should consider an external commercial borrower ecb can be considered for acquisitions abroad for capex only conditions is you need to be a company you need to be profit making and yes, especially if you have got exports there all the more reason you don't you don't have any problem because there is a natural hedge for your loan payment even below 20 crores you can for working capital requirements today rbi sir so you were asking me this rbi allows fcnr b loans 
and the same bank that you mentioned, now we are on record, the same bank that you mentioned arranges both of this. But the point is we need to ask for ECBs and FCNRBs, anything less than 20 crore, working capital requirement, foreign currency, non-repatriable bank, FCNRB loans, right? Any acquisition abroad, domestic funding, to mati ki ji abhi, sir. Please take an ECB and proceed. Right, it, it, that raising funds from abroad depends on how big you are, you know. So then it becomes a problem. See, for a Watsila raising funds from abroad is okay. Can't use the same solution for an electrotherm. So then for an electrotherm, then an ECB is a standard thing for everybody. Kitna, sir. Labor, uh, right, you are so well read. Kitna, 0.25 ka maximum it can go to 0.51%. Even now, right, that's why I said subprime. I don't think LIBOR will shoot up because they are still struggling with recession. So LIBOR, the government, the central banks there will ensure that it is sub 1%. But, but saying that it's, a good, it's not a good time to raise uh, money from India right now. Okay. You got me precisely. Interest rates in India are going to, okay. absolutely. In fact, it's a good time for us to invest in debt products in India. Okay. So if you are if you're talking to any foreign partner and they want to invest in India debt, today with the 20 million limit being revised to 30